Larry here from AmmoNYC.com. It seems these days no exotic or high-end sports car is without some type of paint protection film on the nose, mirrors, and lower rocker panels. In fact, clear bras are offered as an option to almost every new car buyer by their dealership at the time of purchase. How is the film protection supposed to work? Does it work? And how is it installed and cared for? That's all coming up today on this episode of Drive Clean. Clear Bra is a urethane-based film that's applied to the high-impact areas of the car with the intent of shielding the paint from rock chips and road debris. The film is most often used on the front bumper, the side mirrors, and hood, but some drivers are even covering the entire car in Clear Bra. The technology was developed by 3M during the Vietnam War to protect helicopter rotor blades from dirt and debris. In the 1980s, the race car industry adopted this technology as a way to protect the car's finish to ensure optimal aerodynamics. By the 90s, clear bra was being used by the average driver and its popularity has continually increased. I'm here today with Joe from Extreme Vehicle Coatings. With 13 plus years experience, Joe is one of the most skilled installers in the New York metro area. So thanks for being here today. You're welcome. All right, a lot of the questions I get, it's a, it's a hot topic, is putting clear bra on, is it worth it? Is it worth the expense? Should I do it? Should I not do it? What are, the, what are some pluses and minuses of putting this on? Well, the pluses are you're gonna protect your paint. Uh, paints now have uh, have to pass emissions, waterborne. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more brittle than, let's say, back in the 60s where they used to use a lot of lead. Yeah, so everything's uh, VOC now. So yeah, everything has to pass emissions, exactly. you know. So it's um, softer is what you're it's saying? It's a lot softer. Okay. It's a lot. I mean, you know, you'll drive a car like this, you put 800, 1,000 miles on it. and You'll have little spots. Yeah, you're going to have, it's going to be peppered. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. And it's UV protected? Yeah, the film has UV protection in it. Yeah. It also has anti uh Mildew. Yep. So you know, like how plastics sometimes get like the mildewy. Yeah. It, it'll it'll have that. It also um, has like an anti-cracking. You know, so it doesn't crack like some of the older films used to do. Yeah, I remember the old films used to have a yellow. Yeah. You know, that was a oh, I don't want to put one of those on there because sometimes it'll become yellow. What was causing that? Well, the misconception was it wasn't the film that was turning yellow. It was the adhesive. Oh. Have you ever noticed like old glue that gets yellow? Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what was happening. The the urethane top was actually good the adhesive in the back was actually turning yellow from, from the sun. And they've basically corrected that. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they basically, they've, they, so they've done, is, they have, the good stuff. have an evolution on, yeah. And how, and show me how strong this is. I know you're doing a little well, trick before. Well, here's a Lamborghini key, if you want to hold that for a second. Yeah. I mean, I'll just, I mean, just think of a rock hitting this, you know, Jeez I'm pushing Louise. this, Pretty, pretty far. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that's... With a lot of force into it, so. That's really strong. Yeah, it has a lot of, it stretches a lot, too. That's how you get it to, to go around the curves and stuff of the wow. vehicle. Yeah, so this is definitely you, some... You, you can see how strong stuff. it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the next step is uh, prepping the car, of course, right? Yeah. Um, normally, you get a car like this, whether it's this or any type of car, you want to make sure that it's all clean. Try to get... Uh, you might have to clay it. Uh, get any wax residue, especially these signs. If there's like anything in here, I'd oh my god, that's you... that's the biggest, yeah, you biggest get hurdle we have. Here, it's just gonna get yeah. stuck, and then you're gonna see that yeah. little spot. I mean, forever. just just I mean, just to think, you put your fingerprint on it, and it and it, it stays in there. Yeah, and then you're looking at that yeah. for the rest so, of the life. Yeah, <laughs> so definitely, you know, th there's a there's an art to it. This is a 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo. Now what's interesting about this is it had been repainted about 60 plus days ago, so we didn't really have to compound, polish, or even touch anything up, which is a great thing to do if you're doing it on an old car, meaning you're putting a clear bra on an old car, you're gonna wanna touch those up because once you put the bra on, it's only gonna emphasize any issues that may be in the paint. Joe is quickly recleaning the surface of the paint because in the time that he and I were having that quick conversation, he was worried about any little pieces of lint or dust or anything that had fallen on the, on the car. Now, if you were to put the clear bra on right then, that little bit of lint would actually show through and just emphasize even more, just like a rock chip, uh, with the clear bra on top of it. So he's just double-checking his work before he puts the clear bra on. Now that he's sure it's 100% clean, what he does is he adds another layer of lubrication, and this is a mixture of water and baby soap, so there's tons of lubrication 
for when he actually installs the clear bra. Now, if you look at it, he's unraveling it the same sort of fashion that Rob from Infinite Tint did when he installed the tint on the inside of the rear uh, glass there. And the reason why is you just don't want any little contaminants getting underneath there. It's, it's vital, otherwise you'll be picking things out and it just doesn't look very professional. So what he's gonna do is pick up the edge of, uh, of the clear bra and add more lubrication and more lubrication because the idea is he's going to manipulate, meaning move around the clear bra and stretch it around the difficult areas like uh, when there's a little creases in the hood or around the badge. You really want to kind of massage uh, the clear bra in and he's going to do that by hand at first. Clear bras are actually manufactured in and cut to the specification of the car. So in years past, they would come out in really big sheets, and some guys will actually lay that on the nose of the car and cut around it with razor blades. Now, of course, you can imagine sometimes if you cut too much, I've actually run into cars in my career where I can see little razor blade cuts that were perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical that ran along the edge of the actual clear bra. But nowadays, they, actually, they have these big computers that etch out and cut out the specification of the car. So if this is a Lamborghini, they're going to do a Lamborghini cut. If you're going to do a Ford Mustang, then it's going to have a Mustang cut. So Joe has a, um, a ton of different templates, if you will, and his machine will cut it out. And then he goes to the location wherever the car is and can install the pre-cut, uh, which is also pretty neat. Once he feels comfortable with the placement of the bra, he's going to use a rubber squeegee again, much like Rob from Infinite Tint, and he's going to move a lot of that water out of there. Now, again, it's not down there permanently. He can still pick it up and still play with it. Um, but what I noticed is afterwards, he'll remove the water from the surface of the clear bra, not the underneath part. I mean, he'll do that as well, but he wants to see if there's anything in the clear bra. So there's multiple checks that he has to do. Hey, it, number one, is it uh, in the right area? And then number two, you know, is it, does it have anything underneath it? So there's multiple uh, things that you can't really get away with, much like tint, uh, because you're looking through it. It's a clear product. It's a clear um, service, if you will, that he's doing. So he doesn't have a whole lot of margin for error. And that's when this water and the baby oil and that sort of lubrication comes in because uh, in theory, he can just pick it back up and start over again, uh, which is interesting. It's sort of a double-edged sword. Now, off camera, I asked Joe what he was going to do with the edges because I know the edges can be a little bit tricky um, because it is a round surface and you're going to have to uh, get that to stick on the bottom. And what was cool is, you know, you can tell he's been doing this forever. He's going to pull, uh, and when he does cut it, it's actually about a half an inch over each edge so that he can wrap it around. But I said, how's it going to stick there? And it seems like there's, uh, you know, a lot of excess water. But uh, he showed me a trick of lifting the hood up and letting it drip out while he starts another process. And by doing that, it's going to reduce the amount of water that's there so that he can pinch that around the edge. And, and the positive um, aspect of doing that is that you don't really see any of the clear bra edges. More importantly for a detailer like myself, when there's that, that edge where it didn't wrap around, you have to be very careful when you're applying waxes or sealants or coatings or whatever you're doing because sometimes it'll seep into the edge of the clear bra and you have to get it out with a little special brush and it's just, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And if it gets in there on a regular basis and you don't get it out properly, you can actually pick up that edge and fill it with tons of junk. And once that tons of junk is there, it's almost impossible to get out and then you're gonna see a black line. It's, it's really an eyesore. So. People like Joe are, are helping detailers out because of him wrapping uh, the lights and the hood and the, and the fenders and the, and the mirrors all the way around so that there isn't that gap where that, uh, you know, the wax can get in there. So that's, that's very helpful to us. As you can imagine, this is an extremely time-consuming process. Uh, it took Joe maybe four or five hours to do the whole car. I did the hood, the bumper, the headlights, the mirrors, and the lower rocker panels. Um, and as I was watching him, he kept wiping the clear bra when he was done, meaning there was no water on top of the clear bra, and scanning his eyes back and forth, looking for that little bit of lint and looking for those extra water bubbles that maybe he missed. And that seemed to consume, I would say, maybe 50% of his time. So it was pretty interesting. He actually did the work, but he spent maybe half that much time uh, going back and just double-checking and double-checking. And, you, you know, we sort of spoke off-camera 
where he was mentioning, hey, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's clear you can see right through it. It looks amazing and beautiful, but at the same time, it's clear you can see if there's any issues as well. So it's it's either going to be really beautiful or it's going to be a shoddy job. So I have to spend a good amount of time just double checking, double checking. So he's a he's a man after my own heart when it comes to detailing and double checking everything. So it was pretty interesting to talk to him. As he works the lower bumper, it's almost the same process with a little bit of a twist. So he's gonna clean it off as he's done before, make sure there's no contamination or anything in there. Then he's gonna add his lubrication with the baby soap. Now he's gonna unravel it just like he did before and he's really gonna take painstaking time and effort to make sure that as he's unrolling it, nothing gets on the inside of it. So he has his assistant uh, raveling or re-raveling um, the paper as he's rolling it across the bumper and you got to think about it when he was doing the hood he was doing more of a horizontal surface now he's doing vertical so last thing you want to do is have this fall off and fall onto the ground into the dirt etc so uh, that's kind of the caveat number one and caveat number two is that there's way more elevation there's more changes the bumper shifts around and there's a lot of curvatures to it so it makes it way more challenging to get around those edges without creating bubbles or little um, recessed edges that uh, you may need to cut or it's a bit more complicated so he spent a lot of time talking to me about this now overall the process that he did like i said was the lights the bumpers the mirrors the lower rocker panels and the hood cost about um, you know the customer about fifteen hundred dollars now clear bras by any means this is the we were talking about in the beginning the positive and negatives Clear bras are amazing, but they are expensive because this is a, a total process. It's time consuming. It's the, you know, it's a bit of artwork here. And the the bra itself is certainly not cheap. So uh, clear bras can cost anywhere from five hundred dollars, meaning just the bumper, all the way to five, six thousand dollars if you um, you know, wrap an entire car. I just got off the phone with him uh, a couple of days ago and he was talking about he did a a Rolls Royce and they wanted every exterior piece clear broad and that was a five or six thousand dollar job so there's a wide range of course um, based on what you actually uh, want to cover now the interesting thing about this is uh, when you're when it's all done said and done and it's looking fantastic you can protect it you can put sealants on it you can put waxes on it. i do that all the time and it adds just another layer of protection and can still give you that extra pop because a lot of times i hear from people saying Hey, uh, you know, I, I don't want to put anything on it because it's a clear. No, believe me, you can put stuff on it. In fact, you can actually polish it. It's very difficult to do, and I don't recommend doing it uh, unless you practice. But there are ways to polish certain clear bras when it becomes defective. But at the end of the day, the clear bra is designed to be removed or replaced. So based on how much you drive, how aggressive, uh, you know, where you live, all, all random factors like that are going to go into play. But at the end of the day. When you see an old one and they're yellowed and it's just outdated, you can remove it carefully. Um, I certainly suggest having a professional do it so that you don't remove any paint when you're actually pulling the clear bra off, which is uh, you know happens sometimes. So have a have a professional do it. But by by no means is it going to last forever, especially if you're driving your car hard as you're supposed to. So every couple of years, maybe five six years, you pull it off and you redo it. But you won't have to repaint your car all the time. So that's sort of the pluses and the minuses of it and gives you a little bit of, uh, of an idea if Clear Bra is gonna work for you. Joe from Extreme Vehicle Coatings has done an amazing job prepping this car and applying the Clear Bra. It's almost undetectable and is gonna do a great job protecting the paint and will, in the long run, help maximize the resale value of the car. For a PDF of things you should know before having Clear Bra or protective coating applied to your car, visit AmmoNYC.com. As always, thanks for watching another episode of Drive Clean right here on the Drive Network. After editing this video, I got an email on Facebook asking me to talk about on my podcast and my personal YouTube page uh, the effects of bugs on the clear bra. And it's a great question because bugs have a thing called chitin, which is uh, an acidic nature to them. So when they splatter all over the clear bra, if you leave them too long, what's going to happen is they're going to pit uh, or embed 
embed themselves and form these little craters uh, in the actual plastic or the film. So what you want to do is clean them off as soon as humanly possible. And there's multiple ways of doing it. You can wash the whole car, but sometimes the whole car doesn't need to be washed. It's just the front. You can simply spray wax the areas down and wipe them with a clean microfiber towel. Or three, use a bug sponge, warm water, and just wash the particular areas, the mirrors and the front bumper and that sort of thing. And that's, and that's going to remove or reduce that uh, chance of embedding or ruining your clear bra with these pits. Now, the second thing I want to mention is we are taking a two-week hiatus because we're filming two amazing, we'll call them season finales. One's going to be on how to remove scratches and swirls from black paint. We're going to talk about polishers and which one to choose. That's going to be fun. And the second one, or the last one, is going to be how to clean and detail your motorcycle from crazy amount of mud. And it, it, that's going to be a beautiful episode as well. If you have any uh, questions in the meantime, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. And thanks so much for watching.